we have all been waiting for. We need to actually get our character into the framework. How do we do that? Well, I am going to present one method here. This, I admit, is not the main method. There are two methods. Actually, there are three. You can actually do it from scratch. I used to have a video for that, but I don't know. Why would you want to do that? Why would you want to enter each number individually? Let's let all the other VTT guys do that. If you're using Roll20 or Fantasy Grounds or whatever, you have to do that. You have to put in all the numbers manually yourself. Well, as far as the capabilities of those VTTs go anyway. But again, this is one method and it is experimental. I just did this as a technical challenge to myself. I was thinking one day, hey, can I do it that way? Can I read a PDF? and make a token out of it? Let's see. This is the result that you're gonna be seeing in this video. Let's look at what we have here. We have a character sheet, which was printed from Character Builder using Cute PDF, but you can use any PDF printer software that you want, as long as it makes the text selectable. So if I go actually right here, for example, to Healing Surges, see how I can just select that text? If you drag your mouse across and it selects a square, a graphical square, then you can't use that for this demonstration. It has to be selectable text because that's what the importer needs to read. Now, here's the scenario for using this situation, this method. Let's say you have a bunch of old characters in PDFs, but you no longer have the D&D 4E files that they were created from in Character Builder. You just have the PDFs for whatever reason. You can use this method. Unfortunately, it's not very extensive, as you'll see. As I said, I just did this as a lark, as a technical challenge. But let's take a look at it anyway. Who knows? It might be fun. Now, ideally, there won't be anything in the player name right here because that will get rolled into the character name. But that's just one of the caveats that you have to look out for. So what we have here, let's just go through this. And ideally, you want to print out the character sheet where the power cards, which are coming up now, as you can see, have the flavor text above the power. So if you still do have the D&D 4E file, then do that. When you use the character sheet option, at the right, at the top, the last option is hide flavor text. That's no good. You want to show the flavor text above the power, not below the power. That option is available too. Don't do that. So that's pretty much it. Uh, we see we have a full character right here with just one weapon here an item there so what we want to do is we want to go control a or for us os 10 people command a that selects all of the text and we are going to paste this into a token so let's go right click copy and we go to our sample campaign file here now remember we already have a vanny token here right there we can't keep it there because what's going to happen is when we make our new token, it's going to say, hey, wait a minute, you've already got a Vanny token on this map. Do you want me to delete it or do you want to cut out? Uh, let's delete it just so we don't get that prompt. I think that works properly last time I checked, but again, who cares? We can do the surefire way. Now I'm going to go to my library pane, which you go window library and you open this up. I already have a whole bunch of JPEGs that are pre-done here. So I'm going to drag out a blank token. And if you want, you can actually put in config, put in a handout there at this point. We will see that in the next video, but we won't do that. And now for a strange kind of bug that Map Tool has been doing since time immemorial. Uh, for whatever reason, you got to click on the MPV and then see all its macros here to make sure that you've clicked on it. And that wakes up the accelerator key, which allows us to bring up the field, which asks for that text that we just copied. I don't know why this is necessary. I think it's a bug. I don't know. Any of you map tool experts out there can enlighten me on this. Uh, go to the links below and explain, oh, no, no, that's not a bug. This, this is the reason why the map tool designers have done it that way. Well, 
please enlighten me because I'm confused. I don't know why that's necessary. You only need to do it once. When you start up and you load the campaign file, click on it, then you don't need to do it again until the next time you load the campaign file. So enough about that. So we've clicked on the halfling token, and what we're gonna do now is we're going to do F4. Oh, I, I need to tell you a little story about the F4. Uh, last week, ironically enough, I was on a Discord chat with one of my players, and he said, nope, this, uh, F4 is not working. I said, what? Oh, it should. And then we finally figured it out. He was hitting F4 on its own. Uh, for I'm looking at this right now. On my Mac keyboard, on the lower left corner, I have FN. And I have to hold that down first before I can hit F4. And that does the F4 thing. So if make sure you have to, you, you're aware of that. Most of you are, I would imagine. But just in case you're not, yeah, watch out for that. And we get this. Enter PC LCB. PDF, that stands for uh, Legacy Character Builder, or D&D 4E, XML source text. So uh, that's, we have the first one. We have the PDF, so that's fine. So we'll paste in. That's all of the text. Make sure you had all of it selected when you uh, did the copy. Say OK, and away it goes. All right, now it mine as you can see it's finished now uh, i've got a really powerful imac that i'm doing this on so it's going to be pretty quick if you have an older machine with less memory it might take a while and now that i'm mentioning memory remember always keep tabs on what's going on here um, that's the advantage the one advantage of doing it this way this method is very low on memory usage and that's great because the regular method which we'll see in the next video is memory hungry and i actually alluded to that in my introductory videos so as you can see now we have vanny it's not named halfling anymore and live colon va vanny on the left so that is blank as you can see right now so let's click back on the player token that's the library token on the left vanny token is on the right and the way we know that it has not been processed yet is it has the green circle around it still the library token will always have the green circle and we can hit any button here any menu and it will start off the import process now I'm not gonna bore you with going through the actual individual panels uh, we can do that in the next video bit by bit that's the important part uh, so the way we actually avoid doing that is click on the MPB go global toggles and it will turn off PC prompting so it's just going to click OK for us on each panel automatically. So once again, click on Vanny, and doesn't matter, I, I don't know, click on Frankenstein's lab, and it says processing seven entries. Yes, we want that. Say OK to that, and away it goes again. It's going to rifle through all that data and create some macros for us on the library token. And as you can see here on the bottom right, uh, this text in the very bottom little window here that's indicative of the fact that it is processing the data it's not really going to show you anything as you're going through it's just going to go ahead and crunch on that data and generate the code needed to run all your powers uh, listen to that another sound effect a blacksmith is working on Vanny's weapon, which is a sling. And it would seem another one. I don't remember another one, but I mean, there's the dagger, but... Ding, ding! That is the end of the process, which is indicated by the round bell there. So, we get a whole bunch of stuff in the chat window. Uh, these two that you see here are weapon editing results and we see they're both for the sling so it actually put that through twice i'm not quite sure why but uh there is a problem here uh yet yeah, it actually shows in the output here all the macros it generated and there's the initial stage there and the initial buttons that it created on the library token which we will take a look at now click let's look at that look at that it has generated the basic macros 
And uh, there we go. It's generated all the code. That looks good. But again, this is not terribly extensive with respect to fleshing out everything the powers can do because it just does a basic job based on the power card information that it has here. The detail adder files we'll see in the next video, we'll talk more about that then, do a much better job with giving the importer information to work with. But if you just want a quick and dirty character that does all the basic stuff, then this is not a bad way to do it. And uh, I must confess, it just does the power card stuff here. See this stuff here? It just did those things. It actually didn't do, and I'm a little, be honest, I'm a little disappointed about this. I could have sworn I programmed it so it would grab this stuff here. The race features, the class path, destiny features, and feats. It's supposed to get all that stuff too. I'm going to have to look into that for future reference just for the sake of completeness. Once again, I cannot emphasize this strongly enough. This is not a, the main method for doing this. So I'm not going to lose any sleep over this, the fact that it didn't get these three sections here. It's not that big a deal, and, uh, you know, this is not terribly informative. And anyway, storm magic gain multiple benefits? I don't know. I don't know. What benefits? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Wizards of the Coast didn't feel it necessary to actually put in too much detail here. I guess they figured you'd be looking at your character builder while you were playing. Or whatever reason i'm not going to speculate on their their reasoning for doing that let's take a look at the vanny token and let's see if it filled out all the properties correctly sorcerer halfling class and race yep in it bonus is four and i uh, got the hit points that's nice surges per day seven it looks like it got all the defenses very good the speed is six, action points is one. Uh, no surprise there, everybody has one action point. And I got the ability scores, look at that, all six of those. And oh yeah, I got all the skills. So as far as filling out the properties goes, it did a great job. And uh, there's the weapon too. And that's it. This is a basic token which you can use now. Uh, actually, let's give it a quick try, shall we? Let's try doing a lightning strike. Uh, actually, this probably won't work because the skeletons are invisible, so um, it'll give an error. Uh, yeah, it didn't. Uh, yeah, it says no targets found within range. I'm glad this happened because this illustrates the fact that when you do a rest on any token, it will make it invisible, at least for monsters anyway. And when it creates the monsters, it will make it invisible. So we say visible to players, and then we will try that again at will. Uh, lightning strike let's say it's going to automatically select that guy the top <clears throat> token because um well the, the, he's the only one that's visible this guy is invisible and it runs it automatically because remember we still have pc prompting off remember how we unchecked that in global toggles so it's off so it's going to say okay well if you don't want me to prompt you i'm just going to go right ahead and do the power so it goes through and it does that and turns out we missed with a roll of four. Okay, that sucks, but okay. Anyway, it works though. Looks good. And you can add the rest of that stuff manually if you want to. But again, let's go on to the next video where we do the main method for creating a token, a PC token. Hope to see you there. Thanks for watching.